So I'm not just clickbaiting or exaggerating when I say this. I really do believe that I think X Defiant could be one of the best chances of a COD killer or at least a competitor uh, and, and is the game that Call of Duty fans, uh, veteran fans especially, have been waiting for, have been wanting for so long that Call of Duty just has not been delivering on. I played the beta. Uh, for about over six six and a half hours last night and to preface this I played a previous beta as well or a couple of them um, Unfortunately, those were under NDA. So I was never able to share gameplay with it until now uh, or of it until now and uh, I, I want to say one thing first is that going from the previous betas into this beta uh, There's already been vast improvements like it feels way better than it did previously previously I was already super confident in the game. I thought the game was really, really fantastic. Uh, I thought it had a lot of potential, but I thought it felt a little bit, you know, not quite right. Um, and so I kind of needed to see improvements in that in those areas first to, you know, really be like, okay, you know, this game is solid. And they've really improved a lot of the game. And um, the whole point of this beta right now, uh, we're not even in the full launch yet. It's currently June 21st, the time of recording this. Maybe you're watching this after the whole game, you know, launches. Uh, so we don't even know what the full game is going to be like. We don't know the release date, just to kind of preface this. And for anybody who's coming to this video wondering, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to say this right off the top. The beta is going to be uh, June 21st, 1 p.m. Eastern. Now you know. Uh, and it's a free-to-play game, uh, by the way. So when the game actually launches, they've already tweeted out this game is free-to-play, which gives them a huge advantage. Um, the question is, how are they going to monetize it then? Well, obviously, there's going to probably be stuff like a battle pass, assumingly, uh, different things like that. But they all, they already announced that um, <clears throat> there's going to be a bunch of updates, uh, you know, game updates and uh, DLC added um, uh, free updates that is going to be in the form of, you know, maps and new factions, things like that. If you don't know what factions are, I'm going to be talking about that in just a second, so stick with me. Um, but let me just say, like, right off the top, man, like, this game is really good. And you got to understand that the people making this game, a lot of the people working on this game, are people that have worked on past Call of Duties. For example, one of them um, is the executive producer, um, and he is Mark Rubin. You may have remembered him from you know past Call of Duty titles. Uh, Mark Rubin, I think the last Call of Duty he ever worked on was Call of Duty Ghosts. Um, and I was saying that, in, in a way, <clears throat> this has some vibes of Ghosts. Uh, uh, in in some kind of way, it doesn't feel like Call of Duty Ghosts. Don't go in here expecting you know a classic Call of Duty game. It's its own thing, but it does remind you of certain other games. I've heard some people say Overwatch, uh, or in some way it reminds them of Overwatch. Um, maybe a little bit of Valorant, you know, some classic Call of Duty, different things like that. But again, it's its own thing, right? So don't go in here expecting oh this is going to feel like Call of Duty. It's not a Call of Duty game, but it's made by a lot of Call of Duty. Uh, people or ex Call of Duty people. Like I said Mark Rubin, who used to work on various Call of Duty titles. Um, I think he might have also worked on some of the. Uh, I want to say he might have actually worked, helped on some of the Black Ops games. You know what? Give me a second. I got to look this up. Okay, so Mark Rubin worked on <laughs> Modern Warfare 2, like the original, not the not the new one, uh, which is hands down one of the greatest Call of Duties of all time. If you played it back in the day, you know. He also worked on Call of Duty Modern Warfare, uh, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, so the very first MW. Uh, he also worked on MW3, so he, he basically worked on the entire original Modern Warfare trilogy, and then Call of Duty Ghost was uh, the last game he worked on. So he was the producer for all the Modern Warfare games, and then apparently visual effects on Call of Duty Ghost? I don't know. Uh, I'm just kind of looking it up really quick on IMDB. <laughs> I don't know. That was the best uh, I could find. But the point is, he worked on a lot of uh, some of the greatest Call of Duty games that you know people ever enjoyed and loved. Uh, uh, and then you got to think about the fact that we also have ex Call of Duty pro players working on this, like Aches. Um, there's a bunch of different people, uh, you know, from different sides of the Call of Duty spectrum that are working on this game. Uh, so it's really crazy. It, it really is. So now you know a little bit of a backstory. Now getting into the actual game itself, uh, it's it's very very fluid. It's it's pretty quick, but it's not too quick and it's not too slow, right? Like any slower, it might feel a little too sluggish. Any faster, it might be a little bit too too fast. Um, paced for some people's liking. It's it's quick paced, but it's not over the top. You know, we've had some some Call of Duty games, especially that were really fast, uh, and it's it's not like that. Now, um, <clears throat> what I really actually personally like is the fact that they're kind of implementing various Ubisoft IPs into this game, uh, such as factions. So under factions, you're gonna have uh, right now we have five different ones, um, but they're gonna be adding more 
throughout uh, uh, content updates. So they announced, if I remember correctly, I think they're adding, uh, I think they're launching with 14 maps and they're adding like another 12 in year one, which is crazy. So after the first year of the game being out, we're already gonna have up to like 26 maps. Uh, and right at launch, you know, between 12 and 14, right out of the gate, which is huge, because Call of Duty keeps like launching with like what seven, eight maps half the time it feels like. Uh, so they're they're coming out with a lot of maps right out of the gate, and I want to talk about maps in just a second. Uh, but let's go back to factions really quick. So you have basically cleaners, phantoms, uh, libertad, uh, eclon. Eclion? I don't know how to pronounce it. Anyways, from Splinter Cell and Dead Sex. So basically, uh, cleaners are from The Division. Uh, and then we got Phantoms from Ghost Recon. Uh, Libertad from Far Cry 6. Um, and then we got uh, Echelon from Splinter Cell, which again, I haven't played a lot of Splinter Cell, I'll be honest with you guys. And then we have Dead Sec, this one specifically from Watch Dogs 2. Um, so, I mean, there's... It's cool, right? Because you got different aesthetics uh, from all of these different characters, and they all resemble, uh, you know, those IPs. And then the maps are actually, um, they're actually based off of the, all the different IPs uh, as well. So you might go through a, a certain map and you'd be like, huh, this kind of reminds me of, like the Division 1 or the Division 2, for example. Or this, I remember this location in like Watch Dogs 2, right? There's like that, uh, what is it called? Uh, noodle, noodle something. You know that company, a <laughs> weird company. Anyways, the point being is that the, you know the whole theme is based off different IPs, and it doesn't just feel like oh they're just mashing up all the Ubisoft IPs in one game, and you know it just kind of comes off weird or cringy. No, it actually works really well. I like it. I like it a lot. There's that familiarity from all these different IPs. Um, and again, I'm gonna talk about maps in a second because I really like the maps a lot. But I want to talk about factions for one second. So basically, cleaners, um, they're pyrotechnicians, and they have a couple different abilities. So um, uh, the different abilities that you can have. So that you got passive abilities uh, for each uh, faction, and then you have your activated ability, uh, which you can choose from one or like, like one of two different ones, uh, and then you have your 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 ultimate. Right. So think of like uh, Black Ops Three, for example. This is what I mean, right? This game feels like an inspiration, <clears throat> excuse me, in a mesh of like all these different kind of like Call of Duties uh, and then all of these different other uh, first person shooters like Overwatch, you know, you see some inspiration a little bit there and Valorant and, and some people have said Rogue Company. It's crazy. So just for an example, uh, for the cleaners, the passive trait is in uh, Cinderary Rounds, meaning that your ammo uh, inflicts extra burn damage, but decreases we weapon range. So if you're going to use <clears throat> this faction, you're going to have a little bit less weapon range, but you're going to have fire bullets basically. And it's automatic. It's a passive trait. Um, and then one of the two different abilities is, uh, an incinerator drone or a firebomb, which are basically, uh, tied to your L1 button. Uh, that's what these activated abilities are going to be. So for example, uh, the firebomb, you detonate a Molotov cocktail right kind of like in, in your area. Uh, dealing explosive damage and igniting the area. So sometimes you can just kind of run up to like a, let's say like a, a point. Uh, what is it called? It's like hard point, uh, but it's also like domination and things like that. But you can run into there, hit L1. It just like blasts an incinerary round uh, around you uh, with the Molotov cocktail. And it's crazy. And then the ultra is basically uh, the purifier, which is... Um, um, you know, the flamethrower, which is really cool. And then just for example, uh, phantoms are going to be more like um, defensive, right? So they have like barriers and, and, and a shield. Uh, they have health increased via tailored gene therapies, for example. Uh, so, you know, you got different things like that. Libertad is more like healers uh, for the most part. So <clears throat> a lot of healing stuff. Your L1 is going to be a fortifying uh, wave boost, uh, total health and regen for you and nearby allies. Um, so that's your L1. Um, and then your, your alt is basically um, a, like a medic backpack for a large health and a healing boost in, in like a kind of area. Uh, and there's a bunch of different things like that. I'm not going to go through like every single detail, but I'll kind of, you know, brief on it with you guys. Um, the Splinter Cell one, the uh, Echelon, uh, for example, is more like stealth, right? So you can you can get uh, an intel suit, which shows you uh, kind of pings enemies in, a, in, a, in the kind of area. Digital ghillie suit, <clears throat> you basically go invisible, but there's a shimmer. So it's not like overpowered or anything like that. Um, and it's just really cool, man. And then the dead sec one is all about like hacking and stuff. Uh, the one I like is the, for the for the activated ability is the spider bot. You basically throw a spider down. It jumps on someone's face, slowing them down. It starts to shock them, doing damage, um, and it just it, it just it disrupts them. You just kind of like pick them off, and and you're pretty much good to go. So again, that's just kind of a quick example. I'm not going through all the details of, of every single one. Maybe we can make videos kind of you know as a guide format, kind of going explaining more. But I just want to give you guys a little. Bit 
bit of an idea if you haven't played the game. Really cool. Like, I think it works amazingly. Um, <clears throat> it adds, and here's the thing. All these different uh, factions are are viable, right? It, it doesn't feel like even my son was saying, you know, it doesn't feel like anything's necessarily meta, right? It feels like like there's a lot of different uh, options out there to choose from, uh, <clears throat> and it's not like you know one thing's super overpowered. Uh, you start to kind of think that, especially when I when I was using like the healing uh, for Li uh, Libertad, right? I thought, oh, the heals, man, that heals you. It's it's overpowered, but then you think that again, every single faction has their different passive traits it's like a perk um and they have these different abilities like for example like i said with uh with the cleaners right you got the pyro the pyro works really good uh but it's not like overpowered either so again everything felt viable and i, I found myself not able to figure out what faction to really stick with and i it, that's good because i you know it keeps me moving around and trying different things because I would like to, I, I was enjoying, you know, using the Spiderbot for dead sec, and then using the the pyro stuff for the cleaners, and then like I said, using the heals for Libertad. Like I just, they they're all viable, and it's really really cool. And in terms of loadouts and weaponry and stuff like that, you know, we got a bunch of different stuff. You know, we got of of course like, uh, um, you know, your your M16s and your M4A1s, your AK47s and your ACRs and your vectors, P90, MP7, MP5. You know, your shotguns like your double barrel and your LMGs like the RPK and your Mark like the SVD or the MK20 SSR and the snipers like the TAC-50 or the M44 for example so there's like a lot of great <clears throat> weaponry and then of course you got all your attachments right so it's basically a, a choose uh, five so you get five different attachments to choose from between a muzzle barrel front rail optics magazine rear grip and stock so there's uh, <clears throat> there's uh, what is that three four five six seven so there's seven slots and, and you can choose five uh, out of out of those out of uh, those seven which is cool. Uh, and then your devices, you got basically, that's going to be tied to your R1. You got your sticky grenades, proximity mines, frag grenades, flashbangs, EMP. That's just as of right now, and I don't know if there's going to be more in the uh, full game. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> it's really cool. A lot of options to choose from in terms of that and uh, whatnot. Uh, and, and then we get to the maps. The maps are really, really cool, man. I'm telling you, man, like... It reminds me of those classic, like, uh, Call of Duty maps that had these themes. I don't know if you guys remember, I think it was Modern Warfare 3, maybe. There was, like, a carnival map, and I, I used to really love the, specifically the DLC maps for old-school Call of Duty games, because they always seem to go off the rails with those ones, kind of, you know, get really creative with the themes and stuff, whereas, you know, the base maps were more, like, grounded in kind of, like, you know, the, the grittiness of, of war. Uh, but the DLC maps, they usually got, like, pretty creative with, with some of the, the themes they, they would make and that's what i love about the maps in this game in x defiant is that the maps have like these different themes right like that noodle uh whatever it's called that company from from watchdogs 2 noodle something um you know for that map it's just like one of those maps where it's just like it's very vibrant um you know it's basically office buildings that have a bunch of like play structures inside of them right like like adult play structures it's really cool um and it's just a variety of different stuff like that and i'm sitting here thinking man i want to see a mario's plus rabbits map like i know like i don't know if that would you know stand out too much but i dude ubisoft ip why not right like just bring it all and then you know maybe some like mario plus rabbits skin so i mean the map Maps are really good. I, I I don't. There's like maybe one map I played that I wasn't really crazy about, which was Mayday. I like the aesthetic, just the layout's not my favorite. Um, <clears throat> but overall, out of all the maps I played, and there's quite a few in the beta. I don't know if they're all in the beta, but there's quite a few. Uh, out of all the maps I played, I, for the most part, I was enjoying every single one. The map layouts are really good. Uh, they're they're. Um, I, th I guess they're. Are they typically three lane? I didn't really kind of think that through uh, when I was playing them, but I guess you can say that there's a three lane structure. They don't feel bad though. You know, like when we talk about Call of Duty Ghosts, one of the worst things about that game was was the map structure. It was, it, the level design is horrible in that game. That was the worst thing about it. Um, it. It's not like that, obviously, right? This game, it has good maps. I like the maps. They flow very well. Um, they are a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, aesthetically and thematically, environmentally, they, they, you know, atmospherically, like every other whatever, you know, adjective or adverb I can use, it just feels really good. The vibe is nice. I love, love, love the maps, man. They, they, they're, they're a lot of fun. And that's where you're going to be playing on for the most part, right? So if you have bad maps, it doesn't matter how good the game is, um... You know, that's good. it's just the maps are going to ruin it for you if they're not good. So, uh, overall, <clears throat> in terms of gameplay, 
I think it's really solid. I think the time to kill is pretty good. Uh, you know, it's not too quick and it's not too slow. Um, it's... I'm trying to think of like a Call of Duty game I can kind of compare it to, but I'm having trouble thinking about, about it off the top of my head. But the point is, is that I think the time to kill is in a pretty good place right now. You guys can let me know what you think about it down in the comments below if you think it's too quick or too slow. Uh, if you have played the beta or once you play the beta, uh, again, it's going to be opening up shortly. Uh, but overall, man, this game is good. This game is, I honestly think this is a game that I could spend a ton of time in. I think this is a game that, that, that could really... You know satisfy that craving a lot of call of duty fans have been wanting that call of duty is just not delivering on and i'll say this too uh for the past few years we've been playing we've been getting a lot of betas for for call of duty and then when a call of duty comes out because some people might say well it's just a honeymoon fades right it's kind of like something new but with call of duty in the past few years i haven't been able to get like spend this many hours in in a beta or when the game came out and been this excited about you know coming back to the game afterwards um for a long time like i'll be like oh this is you know this is fun yeah you know this, it's new it's 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 great but it didn't really do much more for me beyond that because it's just it's just not hitting the way it used to um whatever for whatever reason and X to find, I think, it satisfies what you know those those uh, those sides of things. So, look, you know, I don't want to make this video way longer than I have. It's already longer than I thought it was going to be. But all that to say, I think this game has a ton of potential if they keep going in the direction that they're going. Uh, you know, they fix. Um, whatever else needs to kind of be smoothened out for for launch and uh that they monetize it correctly i, I mean i assume there's probably gonna be like battle passes and skins and everything's like that uh but as long as it's it's priced fairly it's not o all overpriced like i'm <clears throat> looking at you valorant <laughs> valorant's like insane with the pricing uh you know it's fair pricing i i would say go the go with the fortnite route Look at what Fortnite's doing. They're free to play and they've made bank, man. They've made so much money because they have a very good method that, that number one, entices players to spend more in their game, but it also isn't done in a way that makes players feel like they're being ripped off or being forced into paying for something. Uh, so you got to play it smart because, again, that could be a fine tightrope to walk, right? Yeah, the game's free to play, but if you monetize it the wrong way or unfairly, that's just gonna put fans off. So make sure if anyone from the team's listening, I don't know if you are, but if you are, please take the, that, that those words, uh, take heed to those words, man, because uh, you know I would hate to see that that happen. Um, but anyways, we'll see when the full game comes out. We'll talk about it more. But as of right now, I think this game can really compete with COD, and that's saying something because I mean I'm not just saying that. That's my opinion. You might think differently, but if you have played it, let me know what you think in the comments below. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna play more X Defiant here on the channel, Lord willing. So stick around for more. Make sure to subscribe if you guys haven't already, so you don't miss any future content. Like I said, we streamed it for like six and a half hours last night, time of recording. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Shout out to everybody who hung out and stream. It was it was a blast. I didn't want to stop, but it was really late, so I had to get off. Anyways, thanks for watching. Till the next one, friends. Game on. I'll see you guys soon.